After releasing our initial injecto video, we promised you viewers an enhanced second version, and here it is. It's way better than the original. In this video, we'll show you how we improved from our first injecto, and also how we successfully inject into 3D printed molds. We're also starting pre-sales for Injecto 2.0 kits on our website, so check out the description for more details. Also, one random subscriber is going to win the original Injecto, so be sure to subscribe, and let's get started. The first step is to lay out all the parts that are included in the kit. Again, more information is available on our website. We start the assembly with these two sidewalls, as well as the crossbars that connect them. We walk over to a clear desk where we won't lose any parts, and then we push these internally threaded rods into the counterboard holes that house them. To secure them in place, we turn this setup 90 degrees and fasten the rods with two M5 screws. Don't forget to tighten them. Now they're securely in place, so we can repeat the process for the other side. And... Ta-da! We have a standing setup that looks like a spaceship from Star Wars. Next, we grab the base and these two other rods that we forgot to install in the first step. The base is the biggest and heaviest part of this machine, and these rods, well, they won't fit in now that the two walls are connected, so we need to loosen them up and then push the other two rods in. They don't have threads though, so they'll just sit there for now. With all the bars in place, we're ready to install the base plate. So just align the walls to the base and use the screws to grab on from the bottom. Alright, the base is connected. Now we want to attach the top plate. So here it is, and we attach it the same way as the bottom piece with these four screws. This build also makes for a great one-on-one -on -one bonding time with the brother, just like our DIY router. Our next component is this middle plate. It's got these round grooves which are slightly larger in diameter than these rods to minimize the contact area between the plate and rods to reduce heat exchange. The rods below also act as weight bearing supports for when the injection ram applies a force from the top. To further reduce contact between the heated chamber and the base plate, we insert these round head screws which give us a point contact between the two surfaces as opposed to a flat to flat surface. This will significantly reduce the heat transferred from the heat chamber in red to the rest of the frame. Finally, we get to inserting the heated chamber. And, well, we totally forgot about these two bars. The heated chamber was supposed to go in before this top part, because these two bars are supposed to go through these holes. So let's take apart these four screws and quickly do that. Alright, here's what we decided for the optimal assembly instructions. First, we loosely attach these sidewalls to our base plate. Then we attach these rods to the sides. Next, we mount the mid plate and then grab this assembly here and push the rods into place. And lastly, tighten down the four bolts on the sides and then flip the machine around for the four bolts on the bottom and then repeat to mount our top plate back on again. Sweet, we can now move on and install the big pneumatic cylinders. Our only consideration when installing these is to make sure the air connections are at the back. Otherwise, just push the cylinders into place and thread the screws right in. Don't forget to tighten them. Now remember how I showed you the screws that we used to minimize contact between the heated chamber and the middle plate? I just wanted to emphasize that the top and middle plates also have a unique curved design, which as you can see by these 8 contact points, limits the amount of heat that is transferred by conduction from the hot chamber to the rest of the frame. The next section we're going to assemble is this top part up here. We're going to start with this crossbar, which is used to link the two pneumatic cylinders. Notice that this crossbar is thick. In fact, it's two and a half times thicker than the crossbar that we used in our original Injecto video. This will prevent the crossbar from bending, as it did in our original design. Now the function of this crossbar is to force this plunger into our heated chamber which is then going to push our plastic down through the nozzle. This extreme tolerance reduces the amount of plastic that leaks out between the shaft and the walls which should give us a much more precise injection. So I'm super excited to keep building, let's get right to it. The crossbar mounts on with two large washers and nuts that screw right on. We also made this enlarged hopper that bolts right onto the frame, and this was a very popular request from our viewers who watched the original Injecto video. Now if we pull the ram all the way to the top, you can see that you can't get your fingers jammed in there because we designed the tip of the ram to be lower than the inlet. Now the mechanical assembly is all done, so let's start working on the electronics. We created these two custom black enclosures that accommodate all of the electronics inside them. You can see that we designed them to hold four PID temperature controllers, even though, as we'll show you in a minute here, our heated chamber can accommodate five temperature zones. The long holes in these parts also act as spacers between the base and the bottom of the pneumatic cylinder. 
So without further ado, we can 3D print these and keep building Injecto. We used 100% infill for rigidity and the parts turned out really nice and rigid. Don't mind the gold color on one of them, we just ran out of black filament mid print. Now these slide right into here and are held into place by these long screws which slide right through them. These screws also support the bottom of the pneumatic cylinder. Now for the electronics we have three main items. First, the PID temperature controllers that fit perfectly into our custom housing. Next, we have the injection switches which we're going to connect in series so both switches have to be pressed for the injection to occur. This is another new safety feature. Lastly, our favorite improvement is this limit switch that deactivates the pneumatic cylinders at a specified distance. To do that, we use this custom clamp that slides right over the cylinder rod and hits the limit switch. We also have a stopper for the other side to prevent the crossbar from getting pulled unevenly. Next, we have our heated chamber which has a new and complex geometry so we couldn't machine it in our DIY CNC shop. Instead, we went to PCBWay.com and with a few clicks uploaded the design to the website. After a short time, we got our instant quote of $588 and we're super happy to learn that PCBWay was willing to sponsor this video and waive the fee. I would definitely recommend their services as they're very high quality. In the original Injecto, we used these band heaters which are really expensive and hard to find in the right size, but in our new design, we use these significantly cheaper and much more popular cartridge heaters. Just slide them in and tighten the set screw. They'll hold in there tight enough. Next up, we have our thermocouples which screw right in between the two heating elements that they control. They come in this kit when you buy these temperature controllers for $40. For Injecto 2.0, we're going to use three of the five heating zones for improved temperature control of the plastic. Then we mount these solid state relays that come with the controllers onto the aluminum frame and begin to deal with the wire mess, which is always the hardest part of any mechatronics project. The rest of the electrical should be completed by a professional as this system connects to the grid and is thereby very dangerous if not done properly. Moving on to the pneumatics, we have just two air solenoids and a bunch of these quick tube connectors. The reason we have two solenoids is because this one is needed for the new limit switch system and essentially stops the flow of air into the cylinders once the set injection height is reached. Assembling all these was super simple and pretty much the same way we did in our first injecto video. All systems are connected now so we screwed in the injection nozzle and turned on the machine. Alright so we have our three temperature controls running and remember we can accommodate up to five zones. We also have our two injection buttons for safety. Now, as this chamber heats up, we want to cover it with this Nomex Air Mid, which is just a high temperature cloth that can withstand up to 600 degrees Fahrenheit. To install this, remove the thermocouples, wrap the Air Mid cloth around the heated chamber, mark the holes below, and cut holes in them to reinstall the thermocouples. On the sides, we did the same thing using the screws that hold in the heating elements, and this worked out really nicely. And voila, we're all done. We just close both sides of our aluminum covers and place a quick safety reminder that there are pinch points and high forces in this machine. Next, we plugged in the machine which powered up all the electronics. This also forces the pneumatic cylinders to lift the injection ram. We then press both safety buttons as a final test to make sure all components are functioning properly and Injecto 2 was at last ready for use. This machine is stunning and looks super capable, so let's put it to the test. To begin, we needed to create a mold so we went over to our DIY CNC machine which chews through aluminum at over 600 millimeters per minute. It took us less than half an hour of machining to make both sides of this mold which included both roughing passes as well as finishing passes. We finished machining the two halves of the molds and they look awesome. Now as you can see they don't align very well but that's why we have these alignment holes over here. We're going to be using alignment pins to make sure that they close very repeatably for when we do the injection. To do this we use these alignment pins that we got from McMaster car as well as their bushings. We simply press these into these precision machined holes and then the mold should close perfectly. We also 3D printed the exact same molds and we're very hopeful that we can inject our ABS pellets into them. We're also hoping that we can use these shredded bottles as a way to recycle some of the plastic waste in our DIY machine shop. We shredded these with Shreddy which we released a video of last month. Now we need to set the temperature for each zone which is dependent on the specific plastic we're going to use. Next, we just slide in our ABS pellets and while they heat up in preparation for the injection, we close the two halves of our 3D printed mold with four M6 screws. Lastly, we line up the mold and use our scissor table to clamp the opening to the nozzle. At this point, we're ready to press the injection buttons. 
but of course, nothing ever works properly the first time. Let's take it out and have a look. Clearly the volume of plastic that we injected was too much and the mold overfilled. Luckily, we have the adjustable limit switch which enabled us to reduce the injection volume. But even without that limit switch, once we removed our part from the mold, we realized that the flashing we got was thin enough to just peel off with our hands. We cleaned it up further with our X-Acto knife, broke off the sprue, and ta-da! We made two functional caps that make this machine look much better. These 3D printed molds work super well. They made these amazing caps for our injecto machine which sit perfectly over the nut. Check it out. These 3D printed plastic injection molds work so well that we're not even going to be needing to use our metal molds. That being said, as you can see here, the molds turned out kind of icky and that's my fault. I didn't set the print up properly. That being said, I used a Formlabs Form 3 and these prints cost me about $100. That's really expensive. So what we did here at the Action Box was test a few other SLA 3D printers that we believe will enable you to make these plastic injection molds much cheaper than the Formlab printers. Let's get right into it. So here's our array of 3D printers. This here is our Formlabs that we printed our original mold with. Now we got Creality to sponsor us with this tiny Hallet 1 Plus printer and they also sent us this curing station which we're going to be using. I absolutely love this thing because it cleans the parts way better than a hand wash. Now this here is the brand new Sonic Mighty 8K by Frozen and it looks awesome. We're going to pull out the building plates for all three printers to give you a print area comparison. So comparing the $400 Creality printer to the $900 Frozen printer, it seems like you get what you pay for just in size difference. Now comparing to the $4,000 Form 3, the build plate is more square, but the print area is definitely smaller. So you've already seen the expensive print from the Form 3, let's now test these two printers. Again, this is the cheapest Formlabs resin which costs $180 per liter after shipping. One liter of this stuff that you can use on either of the cheap printers costs only $27 on Amazon, and it doesn't matter if you get a brand name one or a no name resin, it all works the same. For this experiment, just to keep things consistent, we're going to use this Anycubic resin for both printers. Alright, so with our two printers topped up with resin, we can grab the two USBs with our mold files and start the prints here at roughly the same time. It was evident which printer is faster, so it was no surprise when we came back to a finished print on the frozen printer while there were over two hours left on the Creality. These look really good, so let's go scrape them off and put them into our washing station. This also acts as a cure station, so we hardened our molds and did the same to the parts from the Creality printer. And well, we had no issues with either of the molds. They both injected perfectly, so our testing suggests that there are no benefits to using a more expensive SLA printer over these cheap DLP ones. We managed to make many parts so far with these 3D printed molds and Injecto 2. We also wanted to test the injection volume of this machine, which as you may remember from our original Injecto design was only 28 grams. We managed to squeeze out 38 grams on Injecto 2.0 with a theoretical maximum of 46 grams. We also injected some parts with our shredded plastic bottles, but we'll show you the results of that in our Shreddy 2.0 video. As a reminder about Injecto safety, we employed two injection switches instead of just one to keep our hands away from this incredibly powerful pinch point. We also always use proper hand and face safety as the high pressure in this machine can make molds explode, or worse off, shoot molten plastic out towards the operator. The frame of the machine can also get hot to the touch over time, so it must be monitored and ventilated properly. And electrical grounding is key, as the entire frame is made of metal, and this will be the responsibility of whoever sets up your electrical. We're also starting pre-sales for our Injecto 2.0 machine, so make sure to check out our website in the description for more information on that. If you like our content, consider becoming a member or buying some merch. It helps our channel grow. All the links can be found down below. We'll see you next time.